What's going on everybody? Marl the Cross 316 back with another comic book flashback. Today we are looking at The Avengers issue number three. This issue came out in January of 1964 and today we are looking at a great issue, a classic issue. We have the original Avengers going up against the Hulk and Namor the Submariner. So we have a lot of things going on in this awesome issue. I'm glad that you're going to be tuning in. Because, again, this is a classic, awesome, battle-packed issue. We have starring the Submariner, we have Thor, we have Giant Man, Hulk, Iron Man, the Wasp, you name it. We have great stuff going on in this issue. This is brought to you by Stan The Man Lee, who wrote this issue, as well as Jack Kirby, who did the illustrations, inking by P. Raymond, and lettering by Sam Rosen. So let's go ahead and continue our story. Remember from last issue, we had the Avengers um, pretty much teaming up together, and Hulk left the Avengers. And so now the Avengers are on the lookout for the Hulk. Where did the Hulk go? Well, we know that the Hulk um, sees humans as the, his enemy. And this all stems from humans seeing him as a monster. And so what Iron Man does here is he's going to use Tony Stark's transistor-powered devices, his Im image projector, to see if any of the other heroes across New York have seen the Hulk. And so one thing to also note is that we know that Tony Stark is Iron Man, but the other members of the Avengers do not know the identity of Iron Man. And so we see here that the first group that Iron Man is going to go to is the Fantastic Four. And so we see that the image projector goes to the Baxter building, and we see that the thing here is busy. He's going to go out on a date, probably with Alicia. We also see here that his image projector goes to... Uh, Reed Richards and Johnny Storms, who's also Mr. Fantastic, and the Human Torch, and look like they are busy as well as well as Sue Storms as well, as she's getting ready to go to a fashion show. The next image projector it goes to is Spider-Man. We see that Spider-Man is stopping these group of gang members here, and it looks like Spider-Man is too busy to deal and deal with Iron Man at this point as he is dealing with these guys. I have to say, uh, Jack Kirby Spider-Man is not looking too good here. I don't think Spider-Man was not one of his um, best people to, or best characters to draw. Um, that was pretty much left up to Steve Ditko, as we know. He drew Spider-Man very well. We also see here that Iron Man's projection also goes to the X Mansion, Professor Xavier's School of Gifted Youngsters. We see the original team of the X-Men here. They are in the danger room uh, practicing their skills here when all of a sudden the image projector of Iron Man pops up. Iron Man lets Professor Xavier know that, again, he is looking for the Hulk's whereabouts. And Professor Xavier says, I will let you know if we see the Hulk. Now, please excuse us. We have more training to do. So it looks like Iron Man's idea to locate the other um, heroes across town did not work out. So now, they're, so now they're down to, you know, square one here. Where are they going to find the Hulk? Well, one person that we know is very close to the Hulk, and that is Rick Jones. I mean, Rick Jones, he's made his first appearance with the Hulk way back in issue number one of The Incredible Hulk. And so we see here that a lot of the origin of the Hulk deals with this character here, Rick Jones. And we see here that Rick Jones is one of the only characters that we know that can reason with the Hulk. And so we hear, see here that the Hulk here is in the Arizona desert and he's pulling out this big Jeep, it looks like. And Rick Jones tells Hulk that the police are going to find him sooner or later and so he needs to hide. And so we see here that the Hulk um, pretty much listens to Rick Jones. He allows Rick Jones to tag along here. And so they're going to go into this deserted cave. We see here this is the hideout where 
Hulk is able to turn back to Bruce Banner using those same gamma rays that changed him into the Hulk in the first place. We see here that Rick Jones puts um, Dr. Banner to bed, but all of a sudden we see here as Dr. Banner is trying to sleep, he turns back to the Hulk, and now the Hulk is going to see if he can escape here, and he does escape. Now the Hulk is on the loose. He does not hear his friend Rick Jones crying for help. And so what does Rick Jones do? He goes to the Teen Brigade. Remember, they made their first appearance in issue number one. And we see here that the Teen Brigade is going to alert the Avengers. And the first person to hear it is Tony Stark. So Tony Stark here um, gets ready, puts on his Iron Man suit, as well as um, the alert goes out to um, Hank Pym and also the Wasp here. They are Giant Man and the Wasp, also Ant Man. And so they are also going to rush into danger here. So all the Avengers, including Thor, who's in his Dr. Don Blake um, character here, he um, strikes the cane, turns to Thor. So now Thor is going to join up with the Avengers here. And so we see here that Iron Man meets up with Rick Jones in that desert when all of a sudden, from behind, Hulk, I mean, just slams him. I mean, punches him right in the back. And so that takes him off guard here. We see Iron Man uses his transistor-powered um, energy blast to cause rocks to fly at the Hulk. And what does the Hulk do? He grabs a cactus and forces the cactus needles to fly right at Iron Man. Iron Man protects himself with this huge boulder. But who is in the crossfire? It is Iron also, as we see, the Wasp and Ant-Man. And so we see here that the Ant-Man is going to lead the Wasp into this ant hill. And we know that Ant-Man can control the ants with his um, cybernetic helmet here. And we see here that what's going to happen next is that these ants are going to cause this water to basically, or the ground here, to crumble beneath Hulk's feet. And so Hulk plummets into this river here. We see that, I mean, again, Hulk is just unstoppable. Again, a lot of great action taking place here. A lot of great artwork by Jack Kirby. We see that Hulk is going to try to clear his head here. He leaps up into the air. We see that Iron Man and Thor join him. But then we see that Hulk suddenly leaps back down. Um, causes a big cave in here. And now he's going to go into the tunnels here. He tries to grab a hold of this train and tag along, but we see that Iron Man and Thor are following him really close. The Hulk throws an empty caboose right at Iron Man and Thor. Iron Man and Thor crash through the caboose, and we see, once again, awesome, awesome artwork, awesome um, storytelling here by Stan Lee. We see that Hulk is going to use this flower to his advantage. He puts it into a smokestack, it causes a smoke screen, so that causes Giant Man and the rest of the Avengers to lose track of the Hulk, and now we see that the Hulk has been buried into this gravel here. The gravel is then released into this stream of water, and so we know that the Hulk has the ability to swim underwater and hold his breath, but sooner or later, like a well, he has to come and surface and so we see here that a boat and these people notice that someone is floating out at sea. They notice that it's the Hulk, but they know that the Hulk is harmless here as he is pretty much just weak. And during this whole scenario that's going on, we see that um, eyes have been watching the Hulk this entire time. And that person is the Namor the Submariner, Prince Namor. And so what does Prince Namor have to be involved with? What was what interest does he have with the Hulk? We'll soon find out here that Namor meets up with the Hulk. And we see here that the Hulk and Namor fight it out here. But finally, Namor is going to reason with the Hulk. And he basically tells Hulk that, look, we both hate humans. Um, you know, they're, they're the ones that are involved with causing my own race to hate me, as we find out in, a, in Fantastic Four Annual Number 1. 
And so we see here that because of this common um, interest in hating humans, that Hulk and Namor decide to team up together. And so they want to take out the Avengers. That's their goal here. And so they're going to use this big island here called Gribletrar, and that is where they are going to fight the Avengers in this climatic thing here, as we see here, that the Avengers are soon notified that the Hulk and Submariner have teamed up together. They've joined forces. So we see here that the Avengers are going to meet up. And, I mean, once again, awesome artwork, awesome action scenes are going to be taking place here. This um, island here was used by the Brits back in World War II, so there's a lot of weaponry that was left behind here. And so that is what the Hulk and Subman are going to use to their advantage. We see that Thor here um, is about to block it, but then we see here that Iron Man blocks it with his magnetic repulsors. We see that Namor here uses a weapon to cause Iron Man to stiffen up and with his armor. Um, oh man, there's just a lot of things going on. In this great issue, we see Hulk is going to team up with Namor. There's a lot of trust issues involved with Hulk and Namor. Um, they, they're trying to, you know, double cross each other once they try to defeat the Avengers. Will they be able to defeat the Avengers? Let's go ahead and continue as we continue to look here. And I'm just saying, again, a lot of action takes place in this issue. If you don't, if you never read this issue or don't, you don't own this issue, I definitely recommend you know, investing in this issue, getting a low-grade copy of this issue, because it's a classic. It is a classic issue, a lot of great um, just storytelling and action taking place here. We see here that Hulk changes back into Bruce Banner, and so Bruce Banner has no interest in getting in this fight, so he leaves the scene. We think Namor now thinks that Hulk has double-crossed him, that he's deserted him, and so now Namor is left to defend himself against the Avengers. And so we see here that some of the water from the ceiling comes on the body of Namor, revitalizing his strength, and Namor escapes back into the sea to plot his revenge on the Avengers as well as on the Hulk as well as the Hulk. And so that is how we conclude this issue. We see that the Avengers were successful in defeating Namor, but now they have a real threat on their hand as they don't know where the Hulk went off to, and now we have the threat of Namor as well. So what's going to happen next issue as we look at issue number four? I hope to see you there, and then until next time, keep reading comics.